Well, let's take a walk across the street here. There's some other cannons across the street. Quite a few of them, in fact. Real nice ones. And let's see what's going on with them. Here's one next to a shovel. Four pounder bronze gun. Not much is known about this one, all right? Kind of a little mystery cannon. And it went through uh, Confederate hands at Norfolk. And the U.S. got it back again. It's got quite a few dings on it. Somebody tried to break it up, I guess. That's usually what those things mean. But they didn't succeed. The bronze is really tough. This is trophy number 15, I guess. Let's see how the trunnions uh, slope outwards. Kind of interesting. They're almost conical shaped. Kind of unusual little piece. A very large uh, knob, caskable on it, and there may be some little marks right there. Okay, if there are, they're just too hard to read, and we don't know. But there may be some marks on the trunnions also. So there's our little mystery four-pounder gun. Cute little thing, but we don't know a whole lot about it. These ornamental carriages, that's what they are. They're not real cannon carriages. They're made for long-term display. And they were made back during the 19th century. So they're really old, but they've been painted, and so they held up pretty well. This is a Japanese gun that was captured from Japan. Um, on a nice ornamental carriage with Japanese motif things on it. Japanese 36 pounder bronze gun. As I recall, this one's rifled. And there's your history on it. It's got some quite massive uh, sight holders on it, like this one. You could put a sight in there with various types of uh, reticles in it. Very unusual design. A very sturdy looking gun. You see the massive uh, firing lock holder here. We call that a, a vent mass. Just huge. It's about uh, six inches high and about a foot long. If you had that as a separate piece, you'd have trouble lifting it. Uh, this has a capture inscription. It was captured at uh, Simon Sigi, Japan in 1864 by the, uh, let's see, received at Washington from New York in 1866, March 1866, all right? So it's got the history uh, carved right into it there, which is good, because it looks like that'll last a while. But still, this one, like all the rest of them, is suffering. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't have the uh, fine uh, engraving that some do, so it won't lose too much of its identity for posterity. But you see, again, there's a uh, green stuff coming off the copper. Some of that's moss like this, but uh, a lot of it, the green stuff you see, is actually copper that's uh, leaching off from the gun. Here we are back again, Washington Navy Yard. Going to do another gun on the west side, I think it is, of Leetsy Park. Again, on an ornamental stand, this is a U.S. Uh, Army 24-pounder field howitzer. Fits on a number two carriage. Um, a, a relatively heavy weapon. Let's see what the sign says. U.S. Army 24-pounder bronze howitzer. And this one was used by the Confederates to defend Morris Island in Charleston Harbor. And it was captured by the Navy. Um, after the Confederates left. Very historic piece from the Civil War. Uh, the first U.S. made piece I think we've seen on this little tour. The rest of them are foreign. Again, uh, trophy numbers are just about corroded off. This is trophy number, I don't know, what is that? 22, 28, something like that. It's hard to read. See, see what the corrosion does? It just eats everything off and particularly uh, the, the shallower stamping or engraving is the first thing to go. 
and again you'll see uh, the green on the concrete back here and all is, is where the uh, dissolved uh, bronze is run off. Now this one has a deep capture inscription captured by Admiral Lee September 1863. All right. So nice weapon, very historic Civil War piece. 24 pounder U.S. Army field howitzer on ornamental iron stand. And there's some place where copper is dripping off also. Dripping right down from the muzzle. It's a shame. This is one that they've done something about. They gave it to the Maryland Marine Museum. I probably got the name of the museum wrong. Um, probably more than 10 years ago and they bead blasted it to get the corrosion off and then they um, treated it with apparently hot microcrystalline wax which is one recognized treatment I think bead blasting is a little controversial on these uh, the bronze um, at, at least doing so with any force I know light bead blasting is okay to get the loose stuff off but uh, what pressure this is done at I don't know but it looks like it took uh, everything off because there's uh, pretty deep ruts in this one. The surface is extremely rough um, because of the uh, bronze that was lost due to corrosion. See, it's, it's rougher than coarse sandpaper on there. But at least it's not going to deteriorate as long as that wax is on there. Now how long the microcrystalline wax will stay on there we don't know. I think Gettysburg has to retreat their bronze and brass every year or so. So it may not be too long, but uh, at least it's something. And in that time frame, however short, the corrosion has been arrested. So here's another Spanish gun. This is uh, from Carlos III. It was again cast in Barcelona, as many others we've seen here. It's still a smoothbore because it has the smoothbore type uh, sight. A holder made in Barcelona on uh, it looks like June, Junio which is June in 1767 so many of these Spanish guns were cast in 1767 Carlos III again you can see it's kind of shiny kind of a mottled color but that's alright because it does have at least some protection on it uh, that's even protecting it from the bird droppings that you see here. They won't be able to eat into it until that wax is dissolved off of there. Uh, the name of this gun is El Alano. And again, it's the only one in the Navy Yard here that has had uh, a professional treatment of some sort. And let's get down close. You can see how uh, pitted that bronze is because uh, what used to be smooth has been dissolved away.